Right, now this video is about uh, driving high power LEDs and in part one I'm going to be focusing on these 1 watt and 3 watt bead LEDs and I'm also going to be concentrating on uh, driving them from a 12 volt battery so that they can be attached to vehicles like cars and uh, trucks and so on. So now here's a, a quick and simple way to uh, test the LED that you're going to be using. Uh, it works for 1 watt and 3 watt LEDs. Just um, I've bent the uh, tab over there on that side of the LED. Just put it onto a 3 volt lithium coin cell and then if you make the connection it'll light up like that. Now if you've wired up LEDs before you've probably used a resistor in series with the LED to limit the current but it's not really very practical to do that on high power LEDs and here's one reason why. I've done some calculations here for the resistor that we're going to need for a 1 watt LED. Um, 12 volts minus the forward voltage of the LED it gives 8.7 volts across the resistor and using Ohm's law uh, for 300 milliamps that means using a 29 ohm resistor. So I'm going to use a 33 ohm resistor and see what happens. So the LED's on and it's uh, nice and bright. But now the resistor's not happy. And it's starting to cook. So the power in the resistor I squared R is 0 0.09 times 33 ohms and that gives 3 watts um, which is far more than that resistor is capable of withstanding. Now you can get 3 watt resistors but uh, 3 watts in the resistor and 1 watt in the LED that's an awful lot of power wasted. Now one way around that of course is to put 3 LEDs in series that means the LEDs have 9.9 .9 volts across them and that leaves just 2.1 volts across the resistor. The calculation for that is 2.1 over 300 milliamps, 7 ohms. Now I'm using a 10 ohm resistor because that's all I could find. Um, but this has another problem, and that is that this circuit is very susceptible to changes in battery voltage. And batteries, particularly car batteries, do change voltage a lot when the alternator kicks in. You can see that if the battery is at 11 volts, which it could be if there's a fair bit of load on it, you've got 1.1 volt across the resistor, 10 ohms, that gives 110 milliamps. If the battery is at 14.5 volts when the alternator is running, 4.6 volts across the resistor, 10 ohms, 460 milliamps. That's four times as much current through the LEDs when the alternator kicks in. That could easily destroy the LEDs. So it's not really practical to use resistors on high power LEDs, which is why I didn't waste too much time on the maths. What we need is one of these. This is a voltage and current regulator. It looks like a standard switch mode voltage regulator, but there is one important difference, and you can see it on all three of these. There are two resistors. One, two, and on this one also, one, two. One of the variable resistors is for voltage, and one of them is for current. And LEDs need to be current regulated, so that's why we need this type of regulator. So I've connected the voltage and current regulator module to the 12 volt battery. Now the first thing we need to do is identify which of the pots adjusts voltage and which one adjusts current. So on the output I've connected my DVM, that's showing 1.2 volts, and now I'm going to start adjusting one of the pots. I'll start with the left hand pot, so let's turn that up and you can see that the 1.2 volts is starting to climb up. So the left hand pot is for volts, the right hand one is for amps, so I'm going to mark them up. So I've marked the pots V and I, and now I need to set the current pot to 300 milliamps, because that's the current that I want for my 1 watt LED. So what I need to do, these um, probe connections here, are connected to the uh, DVM on the voltage connector. I need to now connect them on the 10 amp current connector. Now that will put a dead short across this voltage and current regulator module, but it won't mind because it's current regulating. I've turned the I pot right down to minimum. It will just immediately start to regulate. So I've connected the uh, red lead into the 10 amp connection and the uh, red LED has come on, that means it's current regulating 
and we've got 30 milliamps of current uh, going into the multimeter. So now I'm going to start turning up the uh, current limiting potentiometer until we get 300 milliamps on the DVM. Needs a few turns to get it going, and there we go. And there it is, 300 milliamps uh, coming out into a dead short out of the current regulator. So now when we put the LED on there, it will get 300 milliamps. And so here's the 1 watt LED running at the proper current of 300 milliamps from a 12 volt battery. Now this switch mode regulator is very efficient. It won't get hot, unlike the resistor, so we're not wasting power. This is the efficient way to drive LEDs. Now this is a buck regulator, and that means that it can only step the voltage down from 12 volts, not up. But it still means we can drive three LEDs because that's a forward voltage of 9.9 .9 volts. What I need to do now though is turn the voltage limit potentiometer up until the red light comes on and then the LEDs are driven. Now the current will be the same, 300 milliamps as defined by the position of the current potentiometer there. So that's three LEDs being driven at the proper 300 milliamps. Now I'm just going to recalibrate the current control to 600 milliamps. There we are, and that's so that I can drive this matrix of six 1 watt LEDs. And there it is, uh, six LEDs in two columns of three, 600 milliamps coming from the current regulator. And once again, even though there's a fair bit of power there, there's now six watts uh, being supplied. The voltage regulator, voltage and current regulator, won't get hot because it's an efficient switch mode type. Now I probably should just mention uh, heat because it's not majorly relevant on the 1 watt LEDs, they seem to be able to uh, survive just sitting in free air. But um, when you get up to the 3 watt LEDs, it's better to buy them on these little star boards, because then the heat is passed through the aluminium back, and you can mount it on one of these heat sinks, like this um, specially drilled heat sink, which can take lots of different types of LEDs, and it will draw the heat out of the LEDs. The 3 watt, probably if left on too long at full power will overheat and burn themselves out. Now heat becomes much more of an issue with these 5 watt and 10 watt LEDs but we'll look at those uh, in part 2.